Good day, saints, and blessings to you as you prepare for this Holy Week. As we are entering Holy Week and preparing for the cross, our reflection for this week will be on the Passion. Now, during church, we will hear this week, uh, this Sunday, the Passion according to St. Luke, and as is uh, as custom, on Good Friday, we'll have the Passion according to John. And so I'm going to be reading for your reflection, the Passion according to Mark, also known as La Pasión Según San Marcos. And so I invite you to uh, sit back, relax, and uh, reflect upon the Passion. And then afterwards, feel free to pause the video and do your prayer time. And I'm starting on Mark chapter 14, verses 32. They went to the place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I'm deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for all things are possible, remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and saying the same words, and once more he came and he found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I am a bandit? Day after day I was at the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for the testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, and coming with clouds of heaven. Then a high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, this man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you're talking about. And he went to the forecourt, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began to say to the bystanders, This man was one of them. But again he denied it, and then after a little while the bystanders again said, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had told him before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes of the whole council. And they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things, and Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. 
But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to this custom. And then he answered him, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, then, What do you wish me to do with this man you call king of the Jews? They shouted, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him to the courtyard of the palace, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And then they began saluting him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put on his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means a place of the skull. And they offered him mixed wine with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him, and the inscription in the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two bandits, one at his right and one at his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemo sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come down and take him down. Then Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that he died in this way and he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger and, and of Joseph, and Salome. They used to follow for him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, since it was a day of preparation, that it was the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead and summoning the centurions. He asked him whether he had been dead, and he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. I'd actually now to take some time for your own silent reflection on the passion. And uh, may your time be blessed. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>